Okay, got two learning checks for you here. This is number six. Obviously pause to read these words. Here is a picture that might help out with this. Then number seven, similar idea here. Pause if you need to. Similarly, here is a picture for the potassium drives. Okay, finishing up with graded potentials. Remember that they are local or graded. So they are going to spread only as far as the stimulus intensity um, related to that stimulus intensity. So they are going to then decrease in strength depending on how far um, as they travel. So that means if they are far from the axon hillock, they are not going to generate an action potential. So a stimulus, here's our stimulus. Um, this is the location here. A stimulus opens gated ion channels. The stimulus is, is typically going to be a neurotransmitter. It could be a physical stimulus or mechanical ion channels. So sodium, for example, here is our stimulus opening sodium ion channels. The membrane potential changes the most at this site of stimulation. So site number one here, right next to where that stimulus was, um, right, we're zoomed in to an axon terminal and a postsynaptic neuron. This is our presynaptic membrane here. Point of stimulation, and then point number one is the closest location. This axis here is going to be um, amount of depolarization. Representing the strength of that stimulus as it travels away from the site of origin. The potent, that, that change, that depolarization decreases as we get farther away from the site of stimulation. Makes sense, right? So two, three, four, five, shown by these decreasing arrows is representing a diminishing, right? Or decreasing potential change. A decreasing depolarization. That is shown graphically like this, right? I, pref I think this picture makes, makes a little more sense to me, um, but showing the same idea. As you get further away from the point of stimulation, the effect of that stimulation decreases. It's passive spread. This effect is passive. Nothing is actively transporting it. It's the movement of ions inside of the cell. The stronger the stimulus, the stronger the change, the greater the change in memory potential, and the, the greater the area is that it travels. So stimulus size matters. What this means is graded potentials can be different sizes. They're graded. Um, and they, when they're initiated, either at the dendrites or cell body, right? That's where local potentials or graded potentials occur. They may or may not cause an action potential. Here is that idea, what I just said. Graded potentials can, so may or may not result in an action potential. Action potentials only are generated at the axon hillock. Another word for that is the trigger zone. So if depolarization is strong enough because the stimulus is strong enough, it, then it can reach the axon hillock and trigger an action potential. If the graded potential reaches that location. So first, just with one stimulus, here's a, a given stimulus, stimulus A. Here it is. Um, a certain amount of neurotransmitters released, maybe one single firing of this neuron. Um, 
results in ion. So this is our potential change, membrane potential change. And it's diminishing across space here. And by the time it gets to the axon hillock, it's not enough. So there is not enough ions present anymore. The effect of the stimulus is not enough to create, to trigger an action potential. Stimulus B, this is bigger, as indicated by a thicker arrow in this case. So because it's larger stimulus, it travels diminishing still, it's still diminishing, but it is just in this case, hypothetical, no numbers, it's big enough to trigger an action potential. So big enough stimulus, the stimulus was here, equals sufficient depolarization where at the axon hillock. This cell might have been super depolarized, like right here. Um, who cares in this case? Um, who cares for, the, for generating an action potential at the axon hillock? Now, in reality, these graded potentials can sum in time and space. So there's not just one stimulus. There might be another one here and another one here. And another one, this one might fire twice. So this neuron might reach threshold, which enough change in membrane potential at the axon hillock to fire an active potential because of more than one graded potential in time or space. We are going to come back to this after we get through the action potential neurotransmitter release and get to the postsynaptic cell. We will talk about the summation of graded potentials in time and space. At this point, I want you to know what a graded potential is, that they can vary in size depending on the stimulus strength and they diminish over space. They only generate an action potential if depolarization is sufficient at the axon hillock, if that signal reached the axon hillock. Um, we will get to the summation of more than one of them at the end of this week.